This, my friends, is a cry for help. I really don't know what to do with this plant. It was pretty much like this. Whenever I bought it, it had kind of a few like brown spots on the inside, nothing too crazy, but it had like tons of really, really dead leaves on the inside. And so I've been trying to pick at those away. And I also bought this phytoplankton solution that you mix with water. And it's supposed to be really good for helping Boston ferns gain some life back, but it doesn't really seem to be doing anything. So I need some tips. I need some help to figure out how to bring this fern back to life because it's so beautiful when when it's thriving, but I'm just really not sure how to like get it back to its restored state. I also thought we could just have a chill little day because it is a super lazy Sunday. It's raining outside. My husband's working. I'm just here drinking some coffee and I thought it would be fun to just hang out and chat and catch up and share some of the things that are on my mind because I was having some revelations last night when I was laying in bed, trying to fall asleep. I was thinking about YouTube and I was thinking about about how crazy it is that we live in a world where we just film what we're doing and we film conversations like I'm filming right now. We are open about sharing so much on social media and there's really such a difference in the amount of privacy that we experience online. And whatever your opinion is about that, I guess what I am just trying to emphasize is that we're so much more present online. When I think back to like my parents, my grandparents and other relatives, we don't have the same amount of like video or photographic footage of those people. When I think back to my childhood, I think about how we had photo albums and things to look back on, but really you were just looking at a few images of those people and maybe you had like slides or some video footage somehow. Maybe you had home videos. When I think about what the next generation is going to experience and my own own son and you know when he grows up all the footage that he'll be able to look back on to see what I was like or to see what things I was interested in or things I was talking about those will all be available to him which is just such a strange concept and I wonder if you have ever thought about that when you're posting something online or if you make videos and you put them on YouTube because you know so many people have channels now and really anybody can have one. And I, I wonder, you know, if you've put any thought into the fact that that is something that, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now will be able to still access and see exactly what we were like at a given point in time, what we were talking about, what we were thinking. And it's just such a interesting and rare concept. I mean, it's not really rare anymore because so many people are going to be doing that. But it's not something that we've really been able to say for previous generations. I just think that's the coolest thing. Also kind of bizarre and otherworldly because when I think back to like, you know, being in junior high or high school, we really only have like our memories of how we think we were or how we perceived ourselves to be. But moving forward, we're going to be able to have so much more video footage of who we were. And I just think that's so interesting. And and I wonder what that will propel to happen and what that will mean for our future. And I don't know, I just, I feel like it, I just kind of had an epiphany about it. I had never really thought about that before. And when I make videos and I put them on YouTube, I, I, you know, think about these topics that are important to me and that I want to talk about. And then I kind of think about them a little bit and maybe write out some notes. And then I put that into a video and edit it and put it out. But it's not just that I idea that I'm putting out into the world. I'm like putting out into the world who I am at a given point in time. And that's going to change as time goes on. But I just, I guess I'm, I don't know. I'm feeling very trippy about it all. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's so interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> 
Also, I did want to share the book that I'm reading right now because I'm actually rereading it. I loved it so much. Um, this is actually a trilogy, so it's three books in one um, by Sandra Gulland, and it's the Josephine B trilogy. And if you don't know who Josephine B is, she was married to Napoleon back in like the 1700s or early 1800s. And so the book includes, yeah, like I said, three different books of this series, and I love it so much. So if you are at all interested in like biographical or historical fiction, I would highly recommend this. It's kind of like written in the way of it being kind of a diary journal entry style. So it's all dated and kind of has Josephine B's thoughts in it as time goes on. And it's just such an amazing story. I never would have known anything about her, but the author definitely put so much work into like researching. Look how thick this is. She put so much work into researching more about Josephine B and the life that she led and you know what happened before she met Napoleon and what their relationship was like and you can just tell she's put so 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 much work into making this novel amazing and yeah I've always really loved reading historical fiction in the sense that it has a lot of truth in it of real events that happened and real occurrences but it's fictionalized so that it is portrayed more like a standard story. Anyways, I love it. And if you're interested in books like that, I'll try to find a link for it somewhere. I think I just got this at thrift store because I was reading the first one. And when I saw that they had the trilogy at my local thrift store, I picked it up. And as you can see, it's pretty well worn. But yeah, I love this book and thought I would recommend it in case you're interested. Also, my son is now officially two months old, which is so crazy. It's really wild to think about how much has changed in the last two months. I mean, how much has changed in the last year. And if you tuned into my last video about a lot of the things I learned over this past year, you'll know that my life really changed in a lot of pivotal ways over the last little bit. But it's wild to already think that he is two months old and that only two months ago I gave birth to him and that that memory seems so recent and it seems like it was just yesterday that all that craziness was going down. Um, it really puts it into perspective how quickly time really does go by. You know, he's growing out of clothes that he was fitting into before and we even had an instance where we put him in these really cute jean overalls like a month and a half ago and they were absolutely swimming on him. They didn't fit at all. They were huge and we put them on anyway just because they were were like so darn cute but a little bit of time passed by about a month and we were going to my sister's and I was like oh let's put on those overalls they'll definitely fit now they're gonna look so cute and we put them on and they were way too small it was like a blink of an eye and they had been so enormous on him and now they were too small and it's just so bizarre to you know see how much he's growing right before my eyes and if you're a parent or even if you're like an aunt uncle a friend someone who has kids you know how quickly they grow and it's just pretty crazy. Also peep the roses behind me here from my lovely husband who purchased for me those roses for my birthday and a couple candles. He got a pecan pie and a apple pie candle because I really, really love those kind of like fall, super, super sweet scents. I feel like any time of the year, no matter what, I really want those like standard fall, cozy, cozy smells in my home. So things like the pecan pies, apple pie, apple crisp, cinnamon, anything, pumpkin, clove, all of those things. So maybe I'll show you a little candle haul of what I recently got from Bath and Body Works because there was a big sale going on. I bought them a little bit out of season. So that's a pro tip if you're ever interested. So give me a second and I'll show you the ones I got. So like I mentioned, these are from Bath and Body Works. I bought them slightly out of season. Pro tip if you're ever looking for awesome discounts and deals, Bath and Body Works, the out of season candles, they always have really crazy sales on. So I'm pretty sure most of these were like 50% off or quite a large percentage off. So the first one that I got is the Fresh Balsam. First of all, I just love this type of like mason jar style candle holder. Now a couple of the ones, oh that I bought are like the single wick candles. And then there's one that I got that I think is like three wicks. So that one, this really, really nice salted butterscotch 
candle. Oh yeah, super sweet. So if you like anything that's like sugar cookie, things like that, the salted butterscotch, I really like that one. And then I also got this pumpkin clove candle and I knew that I was gonna love the scent so much. So I actually, oh, it smells so good. I bought two of these ones because I knew I was gonna love them. And the last one that I got, I think it's a three wick one. Yes, it is, is the Tis the Season candle. So this was kind of like a Christmassy one. It's hard for me to distinguish exactly what the scent is. Oh, okay, here we go. Rich red apple, sweet cinnamon, and cedar wood. Mm, it smells so good. I just find having a really nice candle is so cozy for like fall, winter, just like making the home feel really good. One thing that I always strive for is having my home smell really good because if it's clean and it smells good, it just makes me feel better and more confident and more relaxed. I don't know if you could hear that, but my baby he is like going to town in his pants right now. Okay, I'm gonna take this very quick opportunity while my baby is in his playpen. He's fed, he's changed. This gives me like literally five minutes uh, of chill time before he needs to be picked up again. And I wanna show you how I make my iced coffee because I bought this amazing, amazing, amazing creamer from the grocery store. So if you have it near you, you gotta get it. Let me set you down so I can show you how this is done. Okay, so I actually made a pot of coffee already. As you can see, I already poured it into my mug. I didn't even barely finish it. As you could see, when you have a baby, I don't know about you, but I start to drink my coffee, I can't get to it, and then it goes cold and I don't wanna drink it anymore. So I started turning that into an iced coffee after it starts to cool down. So I get my travel mug, pour that into the mug, then it got some ice. I'm literally gonna like fill it with ice to the brim so that it's like super, super cold. I don't want it to be, you know, watery and just like melting the ice cubes and not like ice cold. I'm gonna get it icy, icy, icy cold. Probably gonna use almost this entire tray of ice cubes. Okay, yeah, two ice cubes left. But now that this is like filled with ice, so this is the creamer that I'm talking about. This is the Starbucks Almond and Oat Non-Dairy Coffee Enhancer inspired by Hazelnut Latte. This is literally so delicious. If you like creamer, but you like sweet drinks, if you like kind of bougie drinks, add this to your iced coffee or your hot coffee, you will not be disappointed. So I kind of add like quite a bit. Go bam, bam, bam. And then I'm just gonna fill the rest of it, so there's really not that much, with some chocolate milk. Give it a nice stir, 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 stir. Oof. And I swear to God, you will thank me. That creamer, I think, is like $7, maybe $8, but you don't need a lot like me. I know I use too much, but this will last us for quite a while. I know you can get some of them that are not non-dairy. They are dairy ones, um, but we prefer this one, and my husband is lactose intolerant, so that's why we get this one. There's a few other flavors that they have, caramel macchiato, white chocolate, mocha, stuff like that, um, but this one, hazelnut latte, is by far my favorite, and so that's why we keep on getting it. Anyways, that's my quick iced coffee. Seriously, try it out. Okay, it's officially the next day and my dreams absolutely came to fruition. I want to show you how we renovated or redid our bedroom. We did not renovate it. We literally just moved furniture around, but we basically completely changed up the whole thing and now it feels like a absolutely different space. So this is what it is looking like now. Same old thing on this side, but now when you walk in, it's almost like it's a hallway. Baby boy's got basically his own little 
bedroom in what used to be our closet. And we've got this cute little diaper caddy station and diaper pail, our dresser with diffuser and plants and books and all that good stuff. And that's that. So we'll just have to move the monitor here and put it actually over here somewhere. But basically what we'll have to do is like hook up an extension cord or do something like that. So more to come on that. And yeah, it basically just feels like a totally different space in here when we were going to bed last night. It just kind of felt like we were in a brand new bedroom. I love how the photos are now like above our dresser and before our dresser was kind of just this place where we put all of our crap and all of our clothes that we were, you know, wearing from that day. And it was just kind of this storage space that was always filled with stuff. And now I'm just excited to like kind of have things more or less displayed on here and organized organized and everything has an intentional space. What was really great about actually doing all this yesterday is I had my son in the baby Bjorn carrier and he was good in there for literally three hours. So we managed to get everything done. We took apart every single thing in this bedroom, put it back together. We vacuumed every little surface, every nook and cranny. And so it just feels super fresh, really, really nice in here. So I'm just so excited and it just feels, it feels way better. So guys, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I hope that you enjoyed this video, kind of a vlog about pretty much nothing, but it's been a couple of days in the life of being a working mom on maternity leave. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you actually kind of like these sort of chill, do nothing sort of vlogs because I could definitely make more of them and it was really fun to take a stab at vlogging and you know, I'm not used to it. So it's been kind of fun trying to get used to that. Anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.